by the Zostanian. Welcome to a special video. I know I've been doing um, a lot of what's my loadout for a little while and there's going to be one about my Hydroid layout since it has actually changed up a pretty good bit since um, I actually did the um, video kind of showing you guys why I main Hydroid. And even from the rework my um, layout has changed a little bit. But Hydroid Prime access dropped today. Um, this video will be getting out to you guys tomorrow, but um, I decided to go all in on Prime access, getting the top tier of it, which includes Hydroid Prime, um, the Ballistica Prime, Nami Scala Prime, and the accessory pack. So we're going to get into all of that right now. So I wanted to go ahead and have Hydroid ready here so that I could actually show you guys what is upgraded from the original Hydroid. So if we take a look at Hydroid Prime, this is my actual um, layout. I will discuss um, fashion frame for my Hydroid Prime in another video so just if you have any questions about how I'm gotten to look like this you may already know but if you if you're curious just wait because there's gonna be another video coming out probably the same day I'm gonna try to get these out pretty quickly but um, basically what the biggest um, what the changes are are you get an extra 50 armor you get another 25 energy but look at this you get another 50 shields. Now, I want to take a look at something real fast before we actually really get into it. So, 175. Let's see. I'm actually curious because he... Hydroid Prime may have broken a certain Warframe record. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, so this is actually kind of interesting still, though. Hydroid Prime is, as of right now... Um, let's see. Let me make sure I got that right. Okay, so it is official. Um, Hydroid Prime is now, once again, 50 armor, 25 energy, an extra 50 shields. And this means that Hydroid Prime and Frost Prime are tied for the highest shields among all Warframes. Now that is pretty awesome. I like having a high shield total. And to give you guys an idea on just how high you can actually get them up, 1680 shields, which is amazing. I love having this kind of um, bulk. People will um, argue like shields aren't as meaty as like health and armor combo, but still you technically get a little bit of that. Um, 8 out of 10 um, steel fiber, I get to 475 armor, so I'm going to get right about 500 and probably 25 whenever I actually max it out. And um, this is actually with max vitality and um, max vitality, max redirection, and max um, prime vigor, by the way. That's how I got these numbers. And health is at 960 with that, so that is pretty good too. So, um, I'm going to actually do something a little bit different. I'm going to de-equip my primary weapon, or unequip it, I guess I, guess I should say. And now, I'm going to show you guys the very low-key surprise that is the Ballistica Prime. Because, okay, here's the thing is that on paper this weapon is actually pretty good because here's the thing is this thing has um, either a quick shot or a charged uh, more concentrated shot whenever you're actually like aiming down the sights I don't think you can actually use the alternate fire on this version but there is something uh, that you guys might not know about it but before I get into that we'll I'll show you during a mission but first Here's how I actually uh, modded it, and this is with no form up, by the way, so this is pretty awesome. Um, got the Hornet Strike, Barrel Diffusion, Lethal Torrent, basically your essentials. I got Scorch, I got No Return, and I can probably um, at some point actually get the full-on Puncture Damage mod and increase this even more, and I might not even have to forma it in order to get that on. And then I have um, the other three of the elemental status mods. 
combined, and that gets me to about a 89.8% status chance, which is pretty up there. And I like my status chance. Alright. And we are going to now take a look at the Nami Skyla Prime. Pretty nice looking swords, I gotta say. I love, um scimitar design like swords so this is pretty good um something else that might actually be kind of interesting that we can compare because i actually do have a lot of dual um sword weapons the ones that like you would want to compare them to logically so let's take a look at them compared to the dex dakra let's see you let's see for the dex dakra you would lose crit chance and status chance, but you would go up a little bit, like 10 points on damage. So that's the comparison there. Compared to the dual commas prime, you are still losing out on critical chance, and you are still losing out on status chance. So that is interesting. Let's see. And next, do we have one more? I'm pretty sure we got one more one more actual dual stance weapon no all right well those are pretty much the ones that you would want to actually compare to but um i'm going to show you how i've modded them and this is actually a weapon that can do a little bit of everything to be honest and um this is actually pretty cool because i was able to get this build once again no forma just straight up leveled potatoed and all that so we got crossing snakes here as my stance um, let's see, I've got Berserker here, because you got that 20% critical chance, more than enough to actually get Berserker off. I've got, um, all four of the, or actually, yeah, all four of the, um, dual stat elemental mods. Let's see, Volcanic Edge, Feral and Scourge, I got Vicious Frost, and then Voltaic Strike. And, um... Pretty much the only reason that I have this here is so that I could actually fit everything on here. Um, and still I have six capacity left over, so that's pretty good. Um, I have Buzzkill for the um, extra base damage and Slash. And um, in addition to that, I have, of course, Prime Pressure Point. If you don't have Prime Pressure or pressure Point, cool to use, just Pressure Point. Um, it's going to be a while before I max that out. I already know. Prime Vigor was... Ugh. And then Condition Overload, probably the best part about this, because this is a 100% chance status mod, or status um, weapon with all those mods on there. And I gain 60% melee damage for each status type afflicting the target. And this can actually come from either the Nami Scala or um, from the um, Ballistica Prime that I'm going to use. Or if I was running with a primary weapon, I could get it from that. I could just stack up a whole bunch of stuff. And you can even get it on your, um, get the extra damage from your teammates as well. So overall, really solid um, weapon. As far as actual numbers, like for actual damage, it may fall short against some other weapons. But in order to actually, like, for it to actually get up to 100% status... Um, and then have a decent um, crit chance for Berserker, I think it is definitely um, probably one of the better dual swords, just in my opinion, that I've used. And I'm not really even a fan of them. So we're going to go ahead on in to a mission so I can show you these What? Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Dumb, dumb thing. Okay. So I'm going to actually show you guys how Hydroid Prime looks whenever you get him. And this, um, I actually have his attachments on him. The special attachments are the Sprite Sail um, armor. And just to give you an idea of what they are, they are these little curved pieces right here on his chest, right here, and on his legs down here. And they do actually have a special effect whenever you channel them. I'll show you that here um, in a minute with the mission. So we're going to do that. Was there anything else? Oh, 
there is one last thing. And this is actually having to do with the accessory, so I guess it is actually good timing. So, I want to show you guys the little su Sugatra. Sugatra, I guess. This is actually the Sugatra that you get with the accessories. It is not bad. I mean, it's going to look better on weapons like this, like a sword or something like that. Not as good on um, a weapon like a staff or something like that. But um, I would say... Whoop, come on, get on there. Okay, I want to show you um, guys a little chaos. something. Check navigation for active this... Um, this actual accessory um, pack is actually pretty good, especially just for fashion frame purposes, specifically for Hydroid Prime. And why does he... Okay, there we go. So, appearance. There we go. Don't know why that happened. So, basically what happens here is um, whenever you take this um, piece off, there's not that much to the actual chest, but whenever you actually put the chest piece on, it looks like it's actually supposed to be part of the armor, so that is pretty cool. Um, and this is how you can get them just starting out. I want to show you um, this skin, particularly the original skin with a little bit of coloring options that I've done from my second thing, or from my second um, primarily used color scheme. So this is kind of what you can get whenever you combine all the colors and everything um, correctly together. You can get a little bit more color in the chest, a little bit more um, of that different color on the shoulders and on the legs, and then overall I think you get a little bit more um, design-wise out of Hydroid Prime because I was kind of weirded out a little bit whenever I noticed that like the vast majority of him was going to be one color, but I think this helps. and. In case you want to see what I do for um, what I actually did for my main color, definitely watch the um, next episode of What's My Loadout. I got a little uh, trick in there for you guys who are really, really into fashion frame and really want to make um, a unique or maybe more non-one-dimensional color version of Hydroid Prime. But anyway, for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Oxamoco because two reasons. One, I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to do the mission with my powers for Hydroid Prime to show you um, what the cosmetic, um, up, or what the cosmetic special for, um, his powers are, and it's only for his tentacles in which, um, you use them from the puddle and the pilfering, well, not the pilfering swarm, but the tentacle swarm. And, um, I also wanted to be able to actually get a lot of energy because since he's a prime it makes sense to go here because there are going to be those death orbs around that we're going to actually be able to use. Now here's the thing I want to show you guys that's really cool about Ballistica Prime. I didn't know this. I didn't read anything up on this so this came as a surprise to me so I want you to watch what happens whenever I kill this guy. Well, maybe not. Hold on. It's right there. It makes a ghost of of the fallen person that goes out and attacks somebody for like a couple of seconds. So that's like the coolest little power ever, and I just wasn't expecting that to happen. It's it's so cool. And he's he's getting in some work too, like for the couple of seconds that he's actually alive. So overall like a really interesting surprise um especially for the ballistica which is a secondary i didn't really even care for but now i'm like maybe i need to figure out a warframe this would be good with like maybe in a revisited episode of um what's my loadout you'll actually see this weapon being used like this is actually kind of cool being able to um have um that kind of ability and it's really cool because I'm hoping that we get more weapons that have these um, unique 
functions to them because um, one of my favorite um, bows in the game, or my favorite bow right now, is the Cernos Prime, in which you guys know, um, if you shoot that, like, four or five arrows actually shoot out of it. So, um, it's kind of reminiscent of Ivara's bow, but you can put it on any Warframe. <coughs> Sorry about that. But, um, it, it's pretty interesting to me. I, um, and that, and pretty much using the ballistic, it gives you almost a pseudo power of necros, if you really think about it, because you're making, like, because you're taking dead enemies and you're using them again, not nearly as long as um, Necros can, but it's kind of interesting to play with. <laughs> like I'm gonna, I'm actually excited to um, look up uh, builds and stuff like that and see what uh, people can come up with. If you guys have a um, interesting build that you guys have actually uh, come up with then let me definitely know in the comments because I am I will be more than happy to try that out. But let's take a look at some of the Nami Skyla. I'm going to warn you, there isn't a whole lot to Nami uh, Skyla. This is pretty much the regular weapon of, uh, of the set. Not to say that it's bad, it's just that there's no special effect like the uh, Ballistica. It's a weapon. It's a melee weapon. And that is fine. I do not mind that whatsoever. Yeah. I actually did enjoy um, the uh, Nami Skyla a little bit more than I thought I would. I don't know why, um, specifically. Like, I, I guess I don't really hate um, dual swords. It's just, I wish that... And I may be wrong about this, but there may be um, a stance that allows me to do this, but I just wish that there was a stance. And let me know if I'm wrong, if there is one. I wish that there was a stance with dual swords that would let you traverse a room a lot easier. Because it seems like it's like you can't really travel a room while you have the actual uh, swords out. Like... Besides that little uh, motion to actually like leap forward with that kind of uppercut motion, you don't have an option to travel, really. But while I actually have a minute, I want to show you guys the special um, cosmetic effect of um, the uh, Prime accessories that you get with Hydroid Prime. So let me go ahead and channel here. You actually get these cool little water projectiles that kind of shoot all around um, Hydroid Prime. I don't like it's kind of cool but at the same time I'm just kind of wondering like is this supposed to like do something? Am I missing anything in particular here? It's not bad uh, necessarily like the armor set um, itself can actually go with a couple of Warframes and I'm gonna be experimenting around to see what other Warframes look good with this armor set on, but, um, I don't know, the, um, the special effect on it is just kind of weird. Personally, for me, I'm gonna go into using my Targus set on, um, my, on, uh, the Hydroid Prime, um, layout as far as cosmetics that I use on a regular basis. So that's gonna be me. But I also wanted to show you guys real quick before we just start bomb, like, just going full ham on this mission the cosmetic um, upgrade to the tentacles and this is the only cosmetic upgrade to his powers so let me go ahead and do this as you can see there's a lot more um, color to them and it looks like you can almost see flesh and kind of a suction cuppy kind of thing going with the tentacles and to also let you know the um, kraken like beast that actually comes up from the floor um, it does not change. So it is going to be the same kind. It's not gilded with gold. I was really hoping for that. But, I mean, like I said, the um, tentacles being the way that they are and kind of having, like, if you saw, like, a little bit of a tipped point, it changes the shape, changes the color of it, makes them look much more powerful, much more noticeable, almost, um, 
almost kind of like um, it was a, it's a little bit reminiscent of before the rework except they are slimmer and pointier mm. and definitely much smarter because of uh, the actual rework well, those were some actual sick combos sick nasty combos all right so let's go with this. Yeah. yeah whoa I guess I couldn't get him. I'm not sure, like, I think... I'm not sure if I can confirm this, so somebody, if I get this wrong, confirm this. I think... the undead effect happens whenever you proc a status with the weapon. Now, it could be wrong. Or maybe it's when you actually launch the enemy's body back. And I think that's actually so cool, like, to think about, like, the technicality of, like, what exactly that's saying. It's like, you shot him, like, with a projectile that had so much velocity that their spirit came out of their body. <laughs> that is actually kind of cool, like, uh, lore-wise. Like, for the weapon, basically. Well, that's kind of cool. I get a little bit of a uh, overshield for uh, a little bit. Uh -oh. Don't wanna, don't wanna mess that up. Uh. Yeah, you take care of that guy. Oh, well, I'll take care of that guy. Yeah. Overall, though, like um, the um, Nami Skyla is good. Um, Especially with that 100% status chance, really, really like that. Um, the Ballistica Prime is probably the biggest surprise um, from all this. Like, I think people are actually gonna be trying to get it like crazy, and probably charging a pretty good bit of plat for him. Like, if I, if I would have to guess, I don't know like how much people are actually going to. Um, be able to get use out of that. That's the only thing that I would say, though, is, like, the whole concept of it is cool, but at the end of the day, people are going to be thinking about things like, is it usable in higher level content? Does it really matter? And is the weapon itself um, good enough to use besides that fact? But I imagine it's going to be a, um, a weapon that people will want, even if it doesn't scale very well later. Just because, like, who doesn't want to have a weapon that can generate zombies and stuff like that? I think that's... I think, I, I think anybody you told that to, like, new or old um, players alike, I think they would kind of look at you and be all like, Dude, I need this weapon. Let's go farm it. And as far as um, the armor goes, um, like I said, um, I'll recap that because we're getting to the uh, getting to the end of it here. At least I think we are. I think we are. Let's see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Step to the blender, quiet blender. Gonna slice you up, dash you up real nice, come on. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, that wasn't even me using it as a like an actual serious stance and everything like that with uh, both of the weapons actually out. All right. You know what? Gotta use the tentacles. There. All right. Yeah. Now that we're actually getting much closer, I can go ahead and talk. Uh, kind of recap um, everything. The um, the prime accessories. Um, I will say, like the special effect, like isn't is kind of odd. I don't know if it's something that needs to be tweaked. I don't know if they were going for something else and like. Now that they've seen it, they're like, oh, we gotta fix that, or something like that. I don't know. 
But um, I think it's worth saying that I think any cosmetic armor piece can look good on any frame. Like, or um, even if you get it and you're like, dang, this ain't too good light, light right now. You may there may be a frame that comes out later on down the road, like a prime, like another prime or something like that, and it fits like a glove on. So just so just that's my opinion on that. Um, as far as actually um, Hydroid Prime. He, um, he is now even more so my favorite frame because now he is the primed version of a frame that I have used ever since I started playing the game. He has been buffed so many, um, he has been reworked and buffed and now because of um, the increase in shields and armor, he can do just about anything, I feel. Like, he is much more capable now than he ever has been. And, like, I'm never, um, like, I would use Hydroid Prime, or I would use Hydroid no matter what for any kind of mission. But now, I don't know. It just seems like it would be a lot easier to do certain things with him now that he has much more pull. But overall, I like um, the I like the um, look of um, all the weapons. I like the look of Hydroid Prime. I love the Ballistica Prime. I need to find some some frame to use it with. It's not going to be Hydroid. I already have a layout for him, and that'll be coming up in another episode. But it's getting a little ranty. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys got to see. Um, just what these new weapons can do in action get an idea of hydroid prime himself and how like how much he got buffed because of his prime form and i hope you enjoyed a look at his accessories as well because i know that that's something that a lot of people kind of wrestle with is like uh, should i get at least the accessories or not i mean yeah, I, I think, I think it's one of those things to where it's worth getting accessory packs because even if, like, you don't use them immediately, you at least get that 90-day um, affinity and credit booster. But that's a lot of weird opinions. It's later in the day. I'm rambling a little bit, but um, I'm going to try and do um, the actual hydroid what's my loadout video if you guys want to know a little bit about how i actually build hydroid prime but thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe to know the next episode is coming out and question of the day hmm. actually this is kind of interesting um i'm not gonna make it about um hydroid primes um excess um I'm not going to make it about Hydroid Prime and, like, if you guys are going to buy them or not. You guys are already deciding that amongst yourselves right now. Here's actually an interesting question. What is your fate, like, which um, Prime accessory pack has been your favorite out of um, the entirety of the game that you've gotten? I'd have to say, personally, um... Technically, it's not the Prime Accessory Pack that I got, but um, I think it would probably be Mag um, Mag Prime's Accessory Pack because it came with the Targus, and you can still get that whenever she becomes unvaulted and they put her in a little pack and everything. The Targus um, armor just goes with anything you could imagine. It looks good. It's awesome. So that's my opinion on that. What's you guys' opinion? Leave your comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. This is us doing signing off. Yeah.